Um, hi everyone, uh, I'm Monica Ibrahim, uh, Communications Manager at Harassmap. Uh, I'm very excited to talk to you today. Um, first, I would like to introduce Harassmap very briefly to you. Harassmap is an Egyptian initiative that started in 2010, late 2010 in Egypt. Uh, it's a volunteer-based group. Um, can you hear me? Hello? Hi. I can't hear you. Okay, so I was saying that Harassmap is an Egyptian initiative, a volunteer-based one that started in late 2010 in Egypt uh, with the main aim of ending sexual harassment in Egypt. Um, more details on our mission. Um, so the norm in Egypt that people do not intervene when they see sexual harassment happening or or people do not speak up when they are subject to sexual harassment and assault. Harassment aims at creating a new norm, changing the behavior of people to actually intervene and take a positive step to stand up against sexual harassment when they see it happen or when, when they are subject to it. So we get asked a lot about the situation of harassment in Egypt. Um, Contrary to the common belief that uh, sexual harassment or assault started a couple of years ago when we started hearing the news about sexual assault incidents in Tahrir Square during the revolution, um, that's completely untrue. Sexual harassment has been a persistent problem in Egypt years ago. But with a society regarding this as a taboo, regarding this as a sensitive issue that we're not talking about and not acknowledging the problem has accumulated and has allowed this epidemic to grow in the society. So there is a recent UN Women uh, report that says that sexual harassment percentage in Egypt has reached, like women who conducted the study with the UN, have said that they have been subject to a form of sexual harassment. 99.3 of them stated that this happened actually. And also at Harassmap we conducted a study um, in 2013 and the numbers came the numbers came similar as well and women who conducted the study um, said that they have been subject to at least one form of sexual harassment but actually 95.4 of them said that this happened so as you can see we the situation of sexual harassment in Egypt has reached an epidemic level and for that so, um, Harassmap has chosen a social approach to address this problem. Like, for example, we don't work on advocacy and we don't work in intervention, for example, when sexual harassment, when sexual assault incidents happen. But rather, we work on long term effort, which is behavioral change. So, on many levels. The first level we have is the reporting. Um, we have a reporting system we re where we receive reports of sexual harassment, um, like uh, we receive reports of uh, incidents of sexual harassment and assault all over Egypt. We receive these reports through um, SMS number, a short SMS number, and social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and we do have uh, a form on our website where we receive the reports as well. And these reports are marked with a red dot on a map that we have on our website. It reports where the harassment has happened, um, what kind of harassment was it, what time of the day, uh, and whatever information the, the person who reports choose to share. And we use these reports um, for many, like many activities that we do at Harassmap. Um, so the reports are used for us, like 
for the second level of our work, which is the volunteers. Uh, we have a huge front of volunteers in Hrasnap. We have uh, 1,500 volunteers all over 22 governorates in Egypt. All of those volunteers are trained. Um, they are captains of volunteers who are trained in a Hrasnap academy that we hold twice a year. And training sessions and workshops all over the government governments of Egypt where we train our volunteers on how to address people and talk to people in the streets to convince them to stand up against sexual harassment, trying to, to set up a new norm, trying to talk to people who have presence in the streets, say a cafe owner, uh, a concierge, um, like um, the people who handle the parking in, uh, in the streets. We're talking to people who have presence in the street, trying to convince them to actually stand up against sexual harassment, intervene when they see it happening, uh, and not to tolerate sexual harassment at all, and not to be silent about it. So we train our volunteers to talk to those people in the streets, how to approach them, how to uh, how to face the, the common excuses to, they give to excuse the harassers, um, try to talk them out of blaming the, the harassed people. Um, our volunteers, they use the reports to, um, the reports we get from the area, like they go out, um, the, the, our volunteers, they go out um, at least once a month in their neighbors and in their streets, talking to the people from their areas, showing them the reports we got from the, uh, the reports we, we get from this area and for example, um, when we talk to people in the streets, sometimes we get answers like, uh, oh no, but harassment doesn't happen here. So, in this area. So, Hello? Sorry for the connection uh, problem. Uh, I was just saying that our volunteers they use the they use our materials, they use our stickers, they use our bags that we give out on the streets, trying to remind people not to stay silent, not to be silent about sexual harassment when they see it happen or when when they see it happen or when it actually happens to them. Um, so what else do we use the reports we get from the map? We have a marketing and communications unit that work on uh, processing those reports and trying to get the patterns and trying to get facts out of these reports. We use the feedback also we get from our volunteers on the streets while they are talking to people. We use that feedback along with the reports we receive to formulate online and offline messages. Those online and offline messages, like they, they formulate the terminology and the messaging that we want to disseminate to people. Um, we have had very successful campaigns uh, throughout the past few years um, at Harasnap. We had um, a Mishsekta campaign. Um, Mishsekta, it's Arabic, translates in English, don't be silent. Um, this campaign was actually to encourage women like to take actual steps to report sexual harassment and to draw the attention of the bystanders around them, around, around, around them in the streets or in the areas where they get harassed to get them to interview. Um, so the Mishsekta campaign was targeting the people who are getting harassed, like, like 
like targeting them, telling them actual steps to take when when they get harassed, what to do, how to draw the attention of the bystanders, how to report, how not to be silent about it. And we had another campaign, um, Harashli translates um, why is he harassing. Uh, it was mainly about, it was mainly debunking all the common myths on sexual harassment and the excuses gave, given to harassers why they are doing this. For example, a lot of people say, uh, oh, but uh, harassment is very common because of the economic situation and uh, because of, um, and because of like the poor social standards and, and like um, because women are not dressed properly. So all those excuses are um, somehow addressed in our campaigns and we're trying to prove this untrue, which, is, which actually is. Um, so those are two of the campaigns we had at Rasmap. Um, those campaigns are online and offline in the same time, so we can reach the largest number of, tar of our target audience, which is all men and women. Um, something else I wanted to like point out at that our volunteers, when they go on the streets, they are not only men and they are not only women. They are both, they are both men and women, and they come from all backgrounds in the society. And when they target bystanders, we do not only target women or men, because at Harassment we believe that um, sexual harassment is a societal problem. It's a social problem that concerns all society, not only women. It's not a women's problem. It's a society, societal or social problem. So at Harassment we have this vision that our volunteers have to be men and women talking to men and women on the streets the whole society we're trying we're very inclusive we include all types of people in our activities whether they are volunteers or whether they are bystanders that we're trying to talk to and um, we have also um, another unit uh, of the work of Harasma, which is the research unit. The research unit is also very important and it makes use of the reports we get from the map. We analyze those reports and we try to come up with uh, academic and scientific studies and research about different aspects of sexual harassment. It's very important to always have this um, academic reserve of an, an academic or scientific studies about sexual harassment. Um, we have recently released a new um, research studies, a research study about um, the effectiveness of crowdsourcing as a um, data collecting uh, method. Um, we're trying to, um, in that research study, we try to compare uh, the traditional methods of uh, collecting data, like interviews, phone interviews, person interviews, or surveys. Uh, and compare it um, to uh, the method we are trying to, uh, we, we're actually implementing in our reporting, which is uh, the crowdsourcing. Um, so very briefly, um, like the pros and cons of the crowdsourcing um, uh, method of data collection. Um, crowdsourcing is a very interesting and very new technique of data collection. Um, it's it's um, like we collect reports from people, so obviously we don't have um, a control over what kind of, uh, of data is being sent to us. But uh, like at Harassmap, all the reports we receive are anonymous, so we don't have a name. But most of this, the information we care about inside the report is where the harassment happened, what happened, and when. Um, and the pro, like the 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 good points of the crowdsourcing as a method of data collection which is that people find it more uh, easily or uh, like more safe um, more safe um, for them to talk when they know that the report is anonymous giving out the um, and it really suits the, the, um, the how sexual harassment is regarded, like it's, it's a taboo, it's a sensitive issue. So people find it more easily or more convenient for them to speak anonymously about sexual harassment um, in an in a, like, a anonymous way. They feel more comfortable this way. So this is about the research uh, unit that we have. We have also we also have this new unit. It's called Safe Areas Unit. The Safe Area Unit uh, is working on um, on creating um, safe areas and safe places uh, inside the streets of Egypt, where 
zero uh, tolerance for sexual harassment policy is enforced. We're trying somehow to recruit um, um, cafes, uh, stores, taxis, um, small kiosks, uh, get them to sign an official contract somehow uh, that says that they will enforce uh, a zero tolerance policy for sexual harassment, that they will re-establish uh, consequences for harassers, and they will not be silent about sexual harassment when it happens around their businesses or around the places they have somehow authority in. So um, the point of the safe areas that we want somehow to, to recruit, to start recruiting like these businesses or these areas and reach a point where this um, where, where this being a safe area is marked with a sticker that says safe area and we're trying to give a training to those people inside these areas on how to handle sexual harassment incidents when it happens, how to intervene um, and so on. So the point, is, uh, the point is to reach a certain level where we have, um, um, where, where we have enough safe areas for other places to start imitating, start liking the safe areas concept and start imitating and start following the trend. So this is about the safe areas um, and there is the safe, uh, but it is a pilot program, like it's not officially launched yet because we, we are putting so much effort um, into uh, recruiting those areas, training them, uh, giving them formal training, signing an official contract with them to reestablish consequences for harassers because we want the launch to be big like we want the launch to be big in, in order for, for for them to be somehow a model or standard for other places that will join the program later we also have the same universities program uh, we are trying to um, recruit um, volunteers captain of volunteers to be trained inside universities of egypt to enforce zero uh, zero tolerance for sexual harassment policy we are trying to um, we are trying to train them to intervene in cases of sexual harassment. Uh, we are trying also to train them to lobby, to, to talk against sexual harassment uh, to bystanders. In this case, in universities like their colleagues, their, their, the students, the employees inside the universities. And we have already trained 100 uh, captains of volunteers in uh, different universities in Egypt. And the program is still uh, in, prog in progress as well. So um, one of the things um, I wanted also to talk about, about after talking about the work of Harassmap and the, like the different levels we have of the work, uh, the reporting system and how it works um, and how it, it like benefits the volunteer work we have on the ground, the community mobilization work, of course, and how it benefits the communication campaigns that we design offline and online and how we use these reports to um, to do the research and studies and how we are trying to re-establish the safe areas in our countries through the safe areas and the safe universities program that we're launching. Um, this is all working like around the philosophy of change we have. At Harasmap, we first, after many experiences and through our work um, on the ground for the past few years, we have adopted a philosophy of change. Um, so the whole idea of targeting by standards is to recreate and they don't intervene when they see it happen. They just walk by when they see it happen. What we're trying to do at Erasmus is to create and reestablish this new norm where people are eager to intervene when they see, when they see sexual harassment. So this number of, of small people, when, they re when we reach this number through the time, people will follow and um, it, we will change the common norm of, um, of regarding sexual harassment as manly and cool and a desirable behavior. Um, we're trying to switch this, we're trying to tip this into being like seeing sexual harassment as it is, a crime, and seeing sexual harassment as it is, as uncool and uh, violation of privacy. Um, this is what, we, what we're trying to do um, through Harassmap, through our mission, through our activities, through our volunteers and through our campaigns. Um, there is something else I wanted to talk about which is like um, 
why we work on bystander men and women and we don't also uh, and we don't only like regard it as uh, a women's problem because we believe sexual first because we believe that sexual harassment does not happen to women only it happens to both women and men but in Egypt like the percentage of sexual harassment happening to women is much more frequent and much more um, alarming um, so we believe that that it's also like the second reason why we target both women women and men that we believe that sexual harassment it's not a problem restricted to women somehow, but no, it's, it's, it's a social problem. And we're trying here, we're trying at Rasmap to, to remove the, the shame and the, the blame that are put on women um, because of the harassment and the excuses that are given to men for harassing. Uh, what we are trying to do is to shift the blame from the harasser, from the, the people subject to harassment to the harassers themselves. We want people to blame the harassers. We want people to stand up against the harassers. Um, the, we are. We have, like through the years, also faced many challenges. There are some that we have um, managed to overcome, and there are some that we're still working on, of course. And th there will also be others that we will face in the future the ch about the challenges. So um, the first challenge that we um, came across with our messaging, the terminology. Uh, as I said, like sexual harassment uh, in Egypt is a taboo topic. It's a very sensitive issue to talk about. It's not very easy to approach people on the street talking to them about sexual harassment, asking them to like actually intervene, actively intervene, or, or ac actually like take a step when they see sexual harassment happening in front of them. So we found it really challenging the messaging, uh, the messaging or the terminology, what terms to use, what, uh, what terms to avoid. Um, so at Harassmap, like with and with the experience, we have to some, some a guide or some sort of um, like uh, a manifesto of, of the words we use and the terminology we use, the messaging we want to disseminate. And we, we all the time we have like internal trainings where we talk to our volunteers and our staff members on how to talk about sexual harassment, how to address sexual harassment, what to say about it, what not to say about it. And uh, the second challenge that we had is um, the technology we're using. As you know, we have a technology of uh, reporting. Uh, we want, like, we want people to report to us, and we receive the reports, and we place them on on the map. Uh, we had some technical problems regarding using the Ushahidi. This is the platform we use for the for the reporting and the Google Maps, like matching the reports with the maps itself. Uh, we had problems with this because we didn't have like technical people in-house on board of our staff that can work out this stuff. And sometimes people who have this knowledge or expertise on this technology is not av available in Egypt at all. So these were, were some of the problems like we came across in the past few years. And um, just to, to like balance the challenges, we have noticed that there is a change in the society. Like um, since we started uh, in late 2010, and we were approaching people, uh, talking to them about sexual harassment, nobody wanted to talk to us. Like um, people would say, like, why are you bringing this up? There is no need. And and, and like people would say that this is very controversial. And we should not be talking about. This. And they refused to talk to us, and they refused to speak up against sexual harassment in general when we started back in 2010. Um, but now, late 2014, and we have sexual harassment like brought up to the public debate, uh, brought up to um, the public opinion, and it's being talked about. And from our work in the Mershakta campaign, or our, through our campaigns and through our volunteers, we have noticed uh, a change that women are actually speaking up on the streets against sexual harassment when it happens to them. So, like, these are two major changes. We feel it's very positive that, that Harassmap has contributed somehow to that we have the issue of sexual harassment brought up to public debate and acknowledged as a problem. Because if we acknowledge it as a problem, we will start thinking about, like, actual steps to, to like, find solutions to it instead of just saying it doesn't happen. So now it's being brought up to 
public debate. We believe that it's 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 now being discussed now. People know it's happening. This is a very positive change, and that women are talking about uh, are stepping up against sexual harassment standing up against it in the streets, uh, not being silent when it happens to them. We believe also that this is a very positive change that Harassmat has contributed to. Um, I hope I have covered um, regarding Harassmat's work, uh, our mission, what we are trying to do, what uh, platforms we the online and the offline, our philosophy of change, uh, our volunteers and our challenges and the change uh, we are trying to make it happen. Um, very nice talking to you uh, today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the summit. Um, please, if you have any questions, uh, can you type them to me on Skype because I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Thanks. Okay. Well. She can't hear us. I wanted to thank her. That was a great presentation. Uh,